these look more like something from outer space than the deep ocean. And it may as well be outer space because where they live, it's pitch black. There's no light. They live in our planet's inner space. It's really hard to see these fish in the wild, so bringing them to life here at the museum is invaluable. Well, this is just a tiny selection of the over 800 species from the really deep waters around our coastline. The waters in the New Zealand region averages 2,000 metres and deeper. Most of these fishes have only been taken in the top 1,000 metres. So there's plenty of unexplored uh, ocean to find fish in, but these are some of the more uh, extreme examples that these fish go to to answer the three basic questions. How to get a meal, how to avoid becoming a meal, and how to find a mate. This is a giant sea devil. It's one of the anglerfishes. It's the, one of the largest of the anglerfish species. There's about 160 anglerfishes worldwide. Now, what you're seeing here is this large animal is the female. And we know it's the female because she has this uh, ornate lure growing out the front of her What's head. What's that for? This is to attract prey. It, it is bacteria in that produce cold light, and she can make them twinkle and flash and glow to mimic squids or fishes or shrimps track them in and bang, their dinner. But what is attached to her stomach here is the male. This is a male of the same species that is now parasitically attached to her. And they will synchronize their spawning and then he'll shrivel up and drop off like a wart and she'll continue on her way. This is another one. This is a, a bearded anglerfish. As you can see, as well as the lure, we have this large beard-like structure off the chin, also producing light and this one also has a parasitic male just here. This particular species has the largest teeth of any fish species in the world relative to its body size. As well as that, they've got a big elastic stomach, so they're capable of swallowing a, another fish that might be twice their size, literally. Other uh, weird and wonderful things, the dagger tooth. These fish have resolved their find a mate problem in that they're all hermaphrodites. What it means is they are both male and female uh, simultaneously. They occur in such low numbers, they couldn't risk that when come mating time that they found the wrong sex, so no matter who they pair up with, it's the right one. This is a relative of this fish. This is a deep-sea lizard fish. And this one actually lives on the seabed. It looks like a lizard, doesn't it? It does, but look inside that mouth. And you can ah. see these huge rows of teeth on the roof of the mouth, on the floor of the mouth, and each tooth is actually hinged. So it folds in like a flick knife. So when it grabs something and it struggles, an octopus, another fish, each struggle just ratchets it further and further into the stomach. It's a long time between meals for some of these fish. So when it comes along, you've got to grab that opportunity. If you don't, you'll either starve or you may in fact become dinner yourself. So what's it like for you when one of these fish come in to Te Papa? It's like Christmas. It's, it's the most wonderful thing. I just love the weirdness, the diversity, the, the strange and unique answers that so many of these fish have to these problems of life. There's many, many more to be found, I believe. We've only just begun searching. Not everyone wants one of these for Christmas, and you're not likely to catch one when you go fishing. This is what makes it so exciting for the world's deep sea researchers. Without them, we may never get the chance to meet these weird and wonderful fish.